Hello YouTube and welcome to the next Roots Learning video. On today's video we're going to be visiting the new Western Mainlines add-on from Just Trains, which is actually a network of routes, and I'm going to be driving one particular route on this network, which is the route between Cardiff Central and London Paddington, which is a distance of around 145 and a half miles. The scenario which I'm using is a custom created scenario specifically for this video, following the real life timetable of train one. On Lima 82, which is the 1655 Cardiff Central to London Paddington service. Along the way, we will be calling at Newport, Bristol Parkway, Swindon, Didcot, Reading and finally London Paddington. All of the AI services are also following the real-life timetable, but I had to simplify the timetable slightly, and unfortunately on a couple of places where I actually wanted to add some delays, I was unable to do so due to a few bugs with the signalling system on this route. Our traction for the journey today is a First Great Western HST. Uh, I am aware that First Great Western has of course now been rebranded as GWR or Great Western Railway, but I just happen to prefer this older First Great Western livery, so I just set the scenario a couple of years ago so that I was able to use this livery. In the future when I make more scenarios on this add-on I will indeed include some uh, Great Western Railway liveried HSTs. So the HST set is made up of two Class 43 locomotives and eight Mark III coaches. The HST locomotives were built between 1975 and 1982 at Brell Crew Works, and a total of 197 of the power cars were produced. The total weight of each locomotive is 70 and a quarter tons, and they have a fuel capacity of 990 gallons. The total uh, power output is 1,770 bhp per locomotive, with the engine rated at 2,250 horsepower per locomotive, and they have a maximum in-service speed of 125 miles per hour, with a record speed of 148 miles per hour. Once in the cab of the HST, there's not a lot that I need to do to set up ready for departure, with the only thing that I need to do initially being to put the reversing handle into the forward position, which I've now done. Unfortunately, the AWS self-test sequence hasn't actually been simulated on this locomotive, nor has the advanced train protection system or the driver safety device, because this is actually quite an old model going all the way back to the rail simulator days. We could certainly do with uh, a new updated HST model at some point and I do hope that one is made for train simulator. So I am using the Armstrong Powerhouse MTU sound pack for the HST to give a much more realistic sound as all first Great Western HSTs were fitted with MTU engines quite a few years ago now in fact. Uh, so the old Valenta engines aren't in use anymore and the HSTs of course don't sound quite as good now as they did when the old Valenta engines were in use. So just down here we have the horn control which is a two-tone horn controlled with the space bar and the B key. And now in the middle there, just between the horn control and the throttle, is the AWS reset button. And then just to the left of that we have the throttle control, which has five notches of power on this locomotive. Up here we've got the speedometer measured in miles per hour. As already mentioned, the maximum speed for this train is 125 miles per hour, and we will be able to get up to that on this journey today. The dots that you can see on the outside of the speedometer are for the advanced train protection system. Actually, I think it might be called automatic train protection. I'm not 100% certain. I do often uh, mix up the uh, name for that. Uh, so yes, those dots are actually for that uh, signaling system, which isn't simulated on this locomotive. 
On the right hand side of the speedometer there we've got the ammeter which measures the amount of power being generated by the locomotive in amps and as you can see it says times 100. So if the needle was pointing all of the way to 20 there then we would actually be generating 2000 amps. And as we accelerate and get faster then the ammeter will slowly uh, fall so that when we're going at around 120 to 125 miles per hour we'll only have a maximum of 500 amps or less. Uh, this also indicates whether you've got too much power when accelerating so as we start moving I will uh, gradually increase the power rather than increasing it all at once. Now over on this side we've got the brake gauges there so you can see the brake pipe gauge on the right hand side and then the gauges in the middle are the important ones as they're the brake cylinder pressure gauge and so as I uh, increase the braking there you can see that those two needles are climbing and when those two needles are pointing to zero then the brakes are fully released. I'm going to try and not go above notch for braking on this journey where possible. Another thing to point out is that the brakes actually release very slowly so I've just moved the handle to the release position and you can see just how slowly there the needles are falling away. So when you're braking when moving you need to be releasing the brakes 10 to 15 miles per hour before your target speed if you're braking up as high as step 3 or 4. So just here now we've got the brake handle which you can see there which has several notches of braking. It's currently in notch 1 which is initial and then we've got 2, 3, 4, 5 and then finally notch 6 which is full service and then one notch above that which of course is the emergency setting which I certainly don't plan on using on this journey today. So now we've had a look around the cab and had a look at the basic controls, let's just take a look at a couple more shots of the train at Cardiff Central Station and then we can depart and head out towards Newport and London Paddington. Departing Cardiff Central, the starting speed limit is 15 miles per hour and we've got around 11 and 3 quarter miles to go to our first stop, which is Newport. So I'm just gradually accelerating up towards 15 miles per hour now. I haven't gone above notch 3 power at this point. And now that we're reaching 15, I'm just going to put the power back into idle and allow the train to coast until we can accelerate further. The speed limit will shortly be going up to 40 miles per hour. We're just coming up on the 40 mile per hour speed boards now. Um, it's going to be a little while before we'll be able to accelerate to that speed because of course I've got to wait until the rear of the train has cleared the speed board. So you can see we're just about to go under some bridges and just in the distance there is a footbridge. Just as we're approaching that footbridge I can then go up towards full power to accelerate up towards 40 miles per hour. So we're just coming up on the footbridge now and I'm now increasing the power initially to notch 2 and now just as the engine starts stabilising continue to increase the power up towards full power to accelerate. The speed limit is now going up to 95 miles per hour which will be the highest speed which we'll encounter on the journey to Newport. In fact the speed limit is now going to remain at 95 miles per hour for the majority of this section of the route. So 
So I am now in full power, accelerating up towards 95 miles per hour. As we get up towards 95, I'm then going to cut the power back. I'm just going to need to go between idle and notch 1 to maintain the speed. As you can see here, the HST isn't particularly the fastest train at accelerating. Getting up to 60 miles per hour takes quite some time, but certainly once we're on the 125 mile per hour sections, you'll see just how long it actually takes to get up to that full speed. And I think from a uh, stopped position, it's something like 9 to 10 minutes to go from 0 to 125 miles per hour. section of the route that we're currently travelling on is actually the South Wales mainline because of course we've started at the capital of Wales and we're heading to London which is the capital of the United Kingdom. We are four track pretty much all of the way to Newport. We're currently on the up main next to us is the down main which is the main line away from London and then over on the right hand side we've got the up and down relief lines. We just passed a speedboard which says 95 over 95, I'm not quite sure why, because you wouldn't see a speedboard like that in real life. It'll just simply say 95 if that's the speed limit, which applies to all trains. But at that speedboard we there had 9 miles to go to Newport. We're now getting up towards 95 miles per hour, so I've just cut the power back all the way to notch 1, just until the speedometer is reading 95, and then I'll idle the power until we slow to around 92 or 93 miles per hour, and then increase the power back up to notch 1. We're now passing Wentlug Freight Terminal on the right hand side and just as we get to the other end of the freight terminal here we've then got 7 miles to go to Newport. It looks like we're now doing 95 miles per hour, so I've just put the power back to idle now. I'm just going to keep an eye on the speedometer needle just until it's fallen a bit. You can see we're now down to around 94, soon 93 miles per hour. And then at that point I'm going to go back up to notch 1 of power, which I've now done. At the whistleboard we just passed, we had five and a half miles to go to Newport. I would just like to apologise for the lag in this video, unfortunately particularly with larger routes within Train Simulator, uh, lag becomes quite an unavoidable problem and I certainly encountered some laggy patches when I wasn't recording so I know it's not just because I'm recording that I'm experiencing lag, but unfortunately it's due to the size of the routes and the number of assets which Train Simulator has to load.
So what I'm looking out for along here now is a 75 mile per hour speed limit warning, which is actually quite close to the speed limit itself, at just under half a mile from the speed limit. So the moment we cross the AWS ramp, which will warn us of that upcoming speed limit, I'm then going to ensure that the power is in idle, and I'm going to break to step between steps three and four to slow down um, in time for the 75 speed limit. And then once we've past the 75 mile per hour speed board we've got three quarters of a mile to go to an upcoming 60 mile per hour speed limit. So we've just come up on the 75 mile per hour Morpeth board warning and I've put the brakes up to step three. Again, apologize for the quite bad, la bad lag patches around here. Certainly I found that just before Newport Station, which will be coming up shortly, um, the lag actually got worse. So we're going to be going through a tunnel soon. And at that point, then the lag is likely to get worse just before we enter the tunnel itself. So we've now slowed down to 75 miles per hour and I'm just allowing the train to coast at this point knowing that the 60 mile per hour limit will be coming up shortly. And I'm just looking out for the Morpeth board warning us of the upcoming 60 limit. And then once we reach the Morpeth board I'm going to start applying the brakes. So I've now got the brakes in step two just to bring our speed down and as you can see coming up just ahead now we've got a flashing double yellow signal which indicates that we're going to be crossing a 25 mile per hour point just after we've left the tunnel here and also we've got a Morpeth board warning us of an upcoming speed limit reduction to 30 miles per hour. So as we leave this tunnel here we're going to initially have a 30 mile per hour speed limit the moment we exit the tunnel and then the speed limit will quickly be going down to 25 miles per hour as we reach the point just afterwards. Again, I apologise for the lag. Um, this is the point where I knew it was going to get bad. In fact, I think that that is the worst lag we're going to experience on the whole journey, thankfully. Uh, so I'm now going to start applying the brakes now we've entered the tunnel. I've gone up to step two of braking just to bring our speed down gently and we'll increase the braking further as required as we get closer to the end of the tunnel. In fact, I'm going to do that now. So I've now increased the braking up to step three and finally up to step four braking which should bring our speed down just about in time. In fact, we're not slowing down quite quick enough. We are doing now so I'm now releasing the brakes we just got down to 30 in time and now you can see just how slow the brakes actually release on this train as I released the brakes when we were doing around 35 miles per hour and in fact we're now down to 20 which is a reasonable speed to be coming into Newport station at. So here at Newport station I'm aiming to stop before the signal at the end of the platform. So I'm just gradually fanning the brakes at present between steps one and two. I'm now in step two of braking as I think that that's just about the right brake force to bring us to a stop just before this signal. In fact, I'm now going to go back to step one of braking just because I feel we're going to stop slightly too early otherwise. Also allows us to come to a gentle stop so we don't jolt the passengers. So here we are, arrival at Newport.
Departing from Newport, the starting speed limit is 30 miles per hour, though it is quickly going down to 20 miles per hour, and at this point we've got around 21 and 3 quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Bristol Parkway. So I'm just in a low power setting to accelerate up towards 20. When I say low, actually it's a, a medium power setting because I'm currently in notch 3 of power. The speed limit has now fallen to 20 miles per hour. I'm just going to leave the train in notch 3 until we've reached 20. And then at that point I'm just going to cut the power back to idle, which I'm now going to do. And just allow the train to coast until we can accelerate further in a moment. You can see here that the speed limit is just about to go up to 40 miles per hour, just after the tree that we unfortunately drove through slightly. We can accelerate up towards 40 miles per hour once we reach a speed board which is coming up for the track on the right hand side and it's got a left hand arrow on it with a 20. So at this point the bridge we're crossing we should be crossing a river but for some reason the riverbed seems to have dried up. I'm not quite sure why that is. So here's the speed board which I mentioned, we can now accelerate up towards 40 miles per hour, so I'm just going to go up to full power now to accelerate towards that. At Newport Station I did actually just turn down the graphics settings slightly, so I have turned down the anti-aliasing from my usual setting, which is the 2x2 setting down to the 8 times setting in the hopes that it will reduce the lag because I've already driven this section once and when trying to record the section between Newport and Bristol Parkway the lag just got so incredibly bad at one point I knew that I couldn't continue with the recording so I'm hoping that with the lower anti-aliasing setting I now get less lag and it's actually going to perform better on this section. The speed limit here is now going up to 75 miles per hour. I had idled the power as we reached 40. And just after we've passed these two grey buildings on the left, I can then be sure that we can accelerate up towards 75. So I'm now back into full power, accelerating up towards 75 miles per hour until the next speed change coming up shortly, where the speed limit will go up further to 90 miles per hour. We're now passing East Usk sidings on the right hand side. We're now coming up on 75 miles per hour, so I'm now going to cut the power back. I just need to go between idle and notch 1 to maintain this speed. I've just gone back to notch 1 now as we're doing around 73 miles per hour at present. And I believe that this speed board coming up now is where the speed limit increases to 90. It is indeed. So we can accelerate towards that just as we approach this next overbridge. I'm now in full power, accelerating towards 90 miles per hour, and once again, as we get to 90, I'm then going to need to go between idle and notch one of power to maintain the speed. So we're now coming up on 90 miles per hour. Just cut the power back to idle momentarily, just until we've slowed back down to around 88. And now at that point, I'm just going back into notch one of power to slowly bring us back up towards 90. 
The next speed change that I'm looking out for is a reduction first to 75 miles per hour and then 70 miles per hour just before Seven Tunnel Junction Station. cut the power back once again as we're back up to 90 miles per hour again until we're down to around 87 to 88 before increasing the power once again. So we're now down to around 87 to 88 miles per hour. I've increased the power once again. I think it's we're now around three miles or so from the upcoming Morpeth board warning us of the upcoming 75 mile per hour speed limit. The Morpeth board warning is half a mile from the speed limit itself. So as we get there, I'm going to idle and break step two, which should be about right to bring our speed down. So we've just passed a first Great Western Class 158 unit. The Class 158s along here I think are generally used on services coming from as far afield as Brighton. Here's the warning for the upcoming 75 speed limit, so I've now gone into step 2 of braking, which I think should slow us down about right in the half a mile we've got until the speed limit itself. Once we enter the 75 mile per hour speed zone, we've then got a further half a mile to go to an upcoming 70 mile per hour speed limit. So I just released the brakes at around 78 to 79 miles per hour, which has allowed us to slow down just about right. So we are now doing 75. We've now got an upcoming Morpeth board for the 70 speed restriction, which is a quarter of a mile from the limit itself. I'm just making a step one brake application at this point, which should bring our speed down about right. So we're now doing 70 and I'm just going to allow the train to coast at this point until we can accelerate further. We're now coming up on Seven Tunnel Junction Station. In a moment we're about to start on a downward gradient as steep as 1 in 90 and at that point I'm just going to allow the train to continue to coast as the speed limit here is going up to 75 miles per hour so I'm just going to allow the train to coast up towards 75 
which is why I coasted through Seven Tunnel Junction. It didn't matter if we lost a little bit of speed, because at this point we're going to gain all of that speed back. And indeed, I am going to need to use the brakes shortly or so to control our speed. We're now coming up on Seven Tunnel just ahead, and the speedboard just outside Seven Tunnel, just here, says that the speed limit is 90 miles per hour, but this is not accurate to real life. Whereas in real life, the speed limit through the tunnel is actually 75 miles per hour. And I'm going to drive here at the real life speed limit, rather than the speed limit as it's been put on the route in game. The Seven Tunnel is 4 miles 624 yards long, making it, I think, the longest tunnel on the National Railway Network in the UK. And we go under the estuary here of the River Seven. They were actually only underwater for two and a half miles of the distance of the tunnel. So I'll just use the brakes momentarily just to control our speed a bit as we are still going downhill. The gradient will be levelling out in a moment, and then once it does, once again, I need to go between idle and notch one of power to maintain the speed. You can unfortunately see one of the common bugs in Train Simulator coming up here. It looks like we're reaching sort of the end of the tunnel. And in fact, that's not the end of the tunnel. It's just where the tunnel hasn't fully loaded properly yet ahead of us. And so it gives that illusion. It was in the Seven Tunnel on the 7th of December 1991 that there was in fact a train collision here where an HST from Paddington to Cardiff was stopped at a signal guarding the entrance to the tunnel. I think it was in the opposite direction and he gained permission to proceed slowly at caution through the tunnel and three miles through the journey through the tunnel. The HST was struck from behind by a class 155 Sprinter and um, it's possibly a track circuit failure which caused the problem but the conclusion uh, wasn't actually sure so they weren't sure whether it was driver error or a track circuit failure which caused the crash. Shortly as we get to the end of the tunnel, we're going to start on an uphill gradient. Up as steep as 1 in 100, and at that point I'm then going to need a bit more power to try and maintain the speed. It looks like you can see the end of the tunnel coming up now, and you can also visibly see the gradient change which is also coming up. I believe we've just started on the uphill gradient now, so I've just given us one notch of power. And in a moment, I'm going to need to go up to a second notch just to prevent us from losing too much speed here. So we're now in notch two of power. I'm going to accelerate back up to the actual line speed of 90 miles per hour, not just as we leave the tunnel, but in a moment as we pass a 90 mile per hour speed board. So even though the line speed on the HUD reads 90 at this point, there is still a 90 mile per hour speed board coming up in a moment. And that's the point where I'll accelerate up towards 90.
We're passing the 90 mile per hour speed board now. I'm going straight into full power, as I know it will take a moment for the power to kick in. And as we're on this uphill gradient, the train won't exceed 75 before the rear of the train has cleared the 90 speed board. We're now coming up on Pilning Station, and at Pilning Station, we've then got five miles to go to Bristol Parkway. Just a little bit after Pilning Station, we're going to start on another uphill gradient. In fact, as steep as 1 in 54, which will significantly affect our ability to accelerate and hold our speed. Indeed, we're going to lose a little bit of speed on this uphill gradient, which you can see just coming up on this right-hand curve here. So the gradient's now going to continue going uphill until just before we reach a single bore tunnel, then there will be a temporary levelling in the gradient. And then as we enter the tunnel, the gradient is going to start going up again at up in 1 in 104. gradient has now temporarily leveled off and you can now see the single bore tunnel coming up so just as we enter the tunnel we go straight back onto an uphill gradient. At the other end of this tunnel, we've then got one mile to go to an upcoming 60 mile per hour speed restriction. And I'm going to be looking out for the Morpeth board warning us of that restriction. And at the Morpeth board, I'm going to idle the power and then break step three, which should bring our speed down about right. I've just cut the power back a bit now as I believe the gradient has changed. And we've just reached the 60 warning now, so I've idled the power. And I'm now applying the brakes up to step 3, which should bring our speed down in time for the upcoming 60 speed restriction. I also need to take note that we have a double yellow signal here, so I do need to drive with caution. And we're just passing through Patchway Station now. The double yellow signal is actually a, a signal on the main line, which is currently showing a red aspect. And it's showing a red aspect mainly because for some reason, there's another train which I routed that way. Um, once the train has passed, it doesn't actually clear the signal and the signal stays stuck at red. So I'm going to have to slow down and stop at that signal and then request permission to pass it. So I've slowed down right down towards 30 miles per hour and now at this point I'm just going to allow the train to coast for a minute. The red signal isn't too far from this single yellow which is why I'm approaching at such a slow speed. I think it's in a moment just after we've reached the uh, line which we'll be joining which will be on our right hand side. In fact you can see a signal on there now you can see the red light to the right. I think that that is the signal is just after there, so once we've rounded this left curve, we should be able to see the signal fairly close, which is why I'm bringing our speed down more now.
You can now see the red signal just ahead, which I need to stop at, so I'm aiming to stop just before that signal. Press tab to request permission to proceed, and then I should be able to drive into Bristol Parkway Station. So this should be about the right place to stop at this point. Now let's just press tab once we have, so we've stopped now. Request to pass signal at danger approved, so I'll just close that. And now we can drive straight into Bristol Parkway Station, which you can see straight ahead of us. And at Bristol Parkway, I need to stop right at the end of the platform. I'm now going to bring our speed up towards 20 miles per hour, but I don't see any point in going above 20 miles per hour on the approach to the station. So I'm now just going to gradually brake to bring our speed down and stop just before the fence at the end of the platform that you can see on the left hand side there. Nearly stopped slightly too late there, but I think we are in just about the right place. Departing Bristol Parkway, the starting speed limit is immediately up to 100 miles per hour, and we've got around 34 and a half miles to go to the next stop, which is Swindon. So I am now in full power, accelerating up towards 100 miles per hour. It will take us a little while to get there, I think two to three minutes probably, before we can reach 100. Along here we're going to have a few small speed changes, but nothing too major. For now we're going to have a constant 100 mile per hour speed limit until we reach Chipping Sodbury, at which point the speed limit will then be going up to 120 miles per hour, and then finally 125 miles per hour at the other end of Chipping Sodbury Tunnel. So just had an AWS warning there, I'm not actually sure what it's for or why it's there, as there are no speed limits immediately ahead of us, so it's one that you can just ignore.
The next landmark along here, or major feature, is a junction which will be coming up soon, which is where the line towards Gloucester, Cheltenham, Spa and Birmingham New Street diverge, and they will be diverging to the left. Now fast coming up on 100 miles per hour, we're doing around 96 miles per hour at present. So I'm going to start cutting the power back in a moment to ensure that we can maintain the speed. I'm now down to notch one of power, which should hold us at around 98 to 99. If I remember rightly, notch one won't allow us to go above 100 miles per hour. So we're just coming up on the junction now. The line towards Gloucester, Cheltenham and Birmingham is now diverging to the left. Indeed, Cross Country used that line and so Cross Country voyages that were travelling from the Bristol direction would turn off this route at this junction to head towards uh, Birmingham. As you can see, notch one of power has held us at below 100 miles per hour at around 98. So uh, th that is the best power setting to be using at this speed when you're on a level or slight uphill gradient. We will be coming up on Chipping Sodbury shortly now with the increase in the speed limits to 120 miles per hour coming up very shortly. In fact, this may be it now. Yep, we've now passed the 120 speed board. So I've now gone straight into full power to accelerate up towards that. We're now fast coming up on the Chipping Sodbury Tunnel, which is the second longest tunnel we go through on this journey after the Seven Tunnel.
actually two long tunnels on um, the routes out of Bristol. So on the route out of Bristol Parkway towards Swindon, we go through Chipping Sodbury Tunnel here. And on the alternate route, Bristol Temple Meads via Bath to Swindon, we go through Box Tunnel. So both routes have tunnels going through the hills at this point. The speed limit has now gone up to 125 miles per hour, though at the next signal we encounter, we've then got one and a third miles to go to an upcoming 110 mile per hour speed limit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking out for a warning for the 110 limit. And then as we reach that warning, I'm going to break step two, which should bring our speed down to 110 in time for the limit. So here's the signal after the tunnel, one and a third miles now to go to the upcoming 110 speed limit. And so I'm going to be looking out for the warning very shortly. just reached the 110 warning and now in step two of braking just to bring our speed down I'm going to release the brakes now we're going to drop to just below 110 miles per hour and I need to go between notches one and two power to maintain the speed at this point we had 15 and a quarter miles to go at the 110 speed board there Sorry, I've got a correction to make. It's actually at the next uh, speed board where the speed limit goes back down to 110, where um, we've got 15 and three quarter miles, sorry, 15 and a quarter miles to go. So I just got slightly confused for a moment there. Now going through another tunnel, I'm currently in notch two of power, and I'm looking out for the increase in the speed limit as the speed limit's going to be going back up to 125 miles per hour very shortly. At that point I will then increase the power to accelerate up towards that. So the speed limit's just gone back up to 125 miles per hour with 17 and three quarter miles to go to Swindon at this point. And we're now passing Court Farm Goods Loops. What I'm looking out for now is the uh, warning for the reduction back down to 110 miles per hour and then apply the brakes at that point, braking step two. And at the point where the speed limit drops back to 110, that's where we've got 15 and a quarter miles to go. just reached the next 110 warning I've just made a step two brake application and we are now down to 110 again in time 
and now back in notch two of power just to bring our speed slowly up towards 110 and so at this point we've now probably got around 14 and three quarter miles to go to our stop at Swindon what I'm looking out for next is a warning for an upcoming 100 mile per hour speed limit which is one mile from the limit itself and then beyond that there will be a warning for an upcoming 70 mile per hour speed limit which will be the speed limit at Hullavington where we cross the junction onto the Great Western Main Line towards or from Bristol Temple Meads so the lines from Bristol Parkway and uh, the South Wales Main Line and the route from Bristol Temple Meads and the Bristol to Exeter Line will converge at the junction I think it's probably now another five to six miles until we reach the speed limit reductions. So it should be around two or three minutes time that I've got to start doing something and slowing down for the junction coming up. Once we're on the Great Western Main Line uh, properly, and uh, we've joined the line from Bristol Temple Meads, then the speed limit will be going up once again to 125 miles per hour, with five and three quarter miles to go to Swindon. So we certainly won't be able to get to a speed anywhere near 125 before we've got to start slowing down for Swindon Station. We've now got the warning for the upcoming 100 speed limit, so I've just idled the power at this point. This next Morpeth board here I believe should actually read 70, warning as of the upcoming 70 mile per hour speed restriction. And unfortunately it doesn't, it just says another 100 on it for some reason, so I'm not quite sure why that is. I'm now braking lightly. The speed limit's now dropped to 100, two thirds of a mile from the upcoming 70 mile per hour speed restriction. I have now increased the braking to step three, which should bring our speed down about right in time for the 70 limit. I'm 
now starting to release the brakes as we're doing 75 miles per hour just to try and ensure we don't slow down too quick so the brakes are now fully released and the speed limit has now dropped to 70 so I'm just going to stay in notch one of power at this point we're now crossing the junction And as you can see, the speed limit is now 125 miles per hour already. We can accelerate towards that as we reach this next overbridge just here. I'm now going into full power to accelerate up towards 125, but we probably won't be able to get much above 100 miles an hour before I've got to start thinking about slowing down for Swindon Station. The markers for Swindon Station are going to be some approach control signals. Initially we're going to have a flashing double yellow. At that point I'm going to idle the power as it's one and a half miles from an upcoming 85 mile per hour speed limit and two and three quarter miles to our stop. now coming up on the flashing double yellow signal just as we've reached 100 miles per hour. At this point I'm just going to idle the power and allow the train to coast. I will break for the upcoming 85 speed limit as we reach the warning for the 85 speed limit. And at that point I'm just going to break step 2 which should bring our speed down about right. And then as a track diverges to the left, I'm then going to increase the braking to step 3 so that we can brake in time for Swindon Station and indeed a uh, point which we're going to have a speed restriction on just before Swindon Station. In fact, we're going to have a 30 mile per hour speed limit. We just passed the 85 warning. I've got the brakes currently in step 2, which has brought our speed down nicely in time. And now I'm increasing the braking to step three. Now the track has diverged to the left. I noticed some quite severe lag here on the approach to Swindon, which is rather annoying. Um, it's not as bad as it was when I tried to record earlier and um, I simply got it stuck at one frame a second, which of course is not an acceptable speed uh, or frame rate to be recording at. Um, so yeah, the frame rate was very up and down for a moment there. I noticed in the built up areas probably due to the large number of assets that needs to be loaded by the game engine. That's where the lag seems to happen. And when we're more out in the open countryside, like on the section between Bristol Parkway and here at Swindon, uh, the lag was not half as bad and not half as noticeable. So we have now slowed down to 30 miles per hour. I'm releasing the brakes. We've actually slowed down just slightly too early. So I'm just giving us a little bit of power now to bring the speed gradually back up towards 30. The 30 mile per hour speed restriction comes into force on this point 
just coming up now where we turn to the left so that we can turn into Swindon platform otherwise we would actually be going through on the through line and we wouldn't be able to stop at the station and now allowing the train to just coast at around 28 miles per hour I'm going to gradually brake to bring our speed down Now in step two of braking, and I will increase that further as required. I don't need to stop right at the end here at Swindon. Instead I'm aiming to stop just a little bit beyond the platform sign, which is now on our left hand side. So with the brake force as it is now, just going to reduce it slightly to give a more gentle stop. We should now be stopped in about the right place. Departing Swindon, the starting speed limit is 30 miles per hour, though it is very soon going up to 85 miles per hour. And at this point, we've got 24 and a quarter miles to go to the next stop, which is Didcot. I've currently just left the train in a medium power setting of notch 3 power to accelerate up towards 30 until we can accelerate further. As you can see now that we've crossed back over onto the main line the speed limit is quickly going up to 85 miles per hour and I can accelerate up towards that as we reach the signal gantry you can see coming up just ahead which has signals on it for the opposite direction. Just idle the power momentarily to ensure I don't break the speed limit. And now as we pass the gantry, I'm going straight up to full power to accelerate up towards 85 miles per hour. The speed limit will very shortly be going up to 125 miles per hour. And indeed it will be going up to that before we've even managed to reach 85. And then from there, there are no speed changes between here and Didcot. So it's a high speed run straight through and I will indeed be able to finally achieve the full 125 miles per hour for the first time on this journey so far. Now passing the 125 mile per hour speed board. So as already mentioned, there's now no speed changes between here and Didcot, which is actually going to make the stop at Didcot the most challenging stop on the journey, as it's the only stop where we have to stop from the full 125 mile per hour speed limit, which means I need around one and a half miles to brake comfortably and smoothly to stop the train. And we need to be braking well beyond our visibility. So I did find when practicing this that Didcot is indeed the most challenging stop of the journey and we'll see how we do when I get there.
In accelerating to 125 miles per hour, I'm going to be able to lead the train in full power for quite some time. And then as we get to around 125, if I set the power handle to around notch 2, we should be able to maintain a speed of around 123 to 124 miles per hour, which I think is quite adequate. Certainly uh, driving one or two below the 125 limit will make very little difference in the way of how long it's going to take us to get to our destinations. The next landmark along here is a fair way off yet and it's going to be Wantage Goods Loops. Um, once we start passing them, once we're at the other end, the London end of the Goods Loops, we've then got seven and a quarter miles to go to Didcot Parkway Station. As you can see, once we're doing a speed of around 110 miles per hour, which has taken quite some time to get to already, the acceleration rate now on the HST is exceptionally slow. And you'll notice that the speedometer needle is only very slowly crawling up towards 125. In fact, to accelerate that next 15 miles an hour could easily take um, four to five minutes in my estimation before we're finally doing the full 125. Another interesting thing to note is that there are no stations whatsoever between Swindon and Didcot, so we're going through a very rural part of England at this point. Once we've passed Didcot then the number of stations will incre increase quite drastically. Indeed there are four stations between Didcot and Reading, which is a distance of only just over 17 miles, and then between Reading and London Paddington, which is a distance of just under 36 miles, there's quite a number of stations and they certainly start getting closer together as we get close to London. But between Bristol Parkway and Didcot, literally the only station we go through is Swindon. So that's quite a, a long distance there, uh, what, 24 and a quarter miles plus 34, so around 58 to 59 miles with only one station in between. As you can see, we've now reached 120 miles per hour, so we're continuing to accelerate. And not too long from now, we should be reaching 125, and just as we get there, I will cut the power back to notch 2 to try and maintain that speed.
We're now coming up on Wantage Goods Loops. I'm still keeping an eye on the speed at this point. I'm still staying in full power for a moment. It looks like we're now doing around 123 miles per hour. I am going to wait until we reach the full 125 before cutting the power back. So as we pass the goods loops, they're around two to three miles long, if I remember correctly. And as already mentioned, once we reach the other end, we've got seven and a quarter miles to go at that point to Didcot Parkway. We've now reached the full 125 miles per hour. I've just cut the power back, in fact a notch one, because it looks like we're about to top 126, just to allow us to lose just a little bit of speed. We're now back on 125, and so I've just increased the power to notch two now, to maintain us at around that speed. We've just reached the end of Wantage Goods Loops after passing through a closed station, though I'm not sure what that station is, I don't know, maybe if somebody can let me know in the comments, I'm certainly interested to know, as uh, I don't know what any of the uh, closed stations may be in this area. The next thing that I'm looking out for is the start of the next four track section. At that point we've got three and a quarter miles to go to Didcot. At the following signal after that we've got two and one third of a mile to go. And so once we reach the signal with two and one third of a mile to go, I am then going to idle the power at that point and start preparing to break uh, for Didcot station. Looks like we've got a level crossing there that was just uh, slightly faulty as the cars were still going across in front of us. Thankfully we didn't collide with one. Of course in the game if you do you just go straight through it anyway. We've now reached the start of the four track section which I mentioned with three and a quarter miles to go to Didcot station. I'm now looking out for the next signal uh, as that's the point where I'm going to idle the power. now reach the next signal the power is now in idle so we're going to lose just a little bit of speed at this point what I'm looking out for now is a grey box on the right hand side at this gantry just here we're about to pass under we've got just under two miles to go so there should be a grey box coming up on the right hand side shortly at that point I'm then going to break up to step four to five we're just passing the box now 
So I've made quite a hard brake application at this point up to, you can see, four on the brake gauges there, just because I want to ensure that we do lose speed quick enough. I will reduce the braking as we get closer to Didcot Parkway Station. In fact, I think I already can. I'm going to go down one notch in braking at this point. So we've just gone down one notch and the station should be coming up very shortly. just release the braking a bit more just because I feel we're going to stop just a little too early here you can now see the station coming up just ahead I believe you can indeed so I've just gone back to step two of braking momentarily as that should bring our speed down about right don't really want to enter the platform any faster than 30 miles per hour And I'm aiming to stop here at the second to last platform sign on the left hand side. We're now coming up on the second to last platform sign. You can just see it on the left here. You can see the very last one coming up just a little bit ahead. I've increased the braking to step three, which should still bring us to a reasonably gentle stop. And we should now be stopped in about the right place. Departing Didcot Parkway, the starting speed limit is 125 miles per hour and we've got around 17 and a third miles to go to the next stop, which is Reading. From this point we're now going to be four track all of the way into London so here we're currently on the up main with the down main to our right and then on the left hand side we've got the relief lines which are mainly used for stopping services and also used for services heading up towards Oxford which aren't necessarily stopping services although many of them will travel along the down main until just to the uh, east of Didcot to the junction which we'll be crossing shortly and then cross over onto the relief lines. Currently on slow and local commuter services, it's the Thames Turbo units which reign supreme, class 165s and 166s. So you're going to see quite a few of them on the relief lines between here and London Paddington. We're now just coming up on, I believe it is called Didcot East Junction. So this is where the trains can um, change between the relief line and the main lines. There is just one speed change between here and just outside Reading, which is where the speed limit is going to drop to 120 miles per hour. And indeed, we will have a Morpeth board warning for that as well, but it won't affect us as it's going to drop to 120 long before we've been able to reach 120. And it goes back up to 125 also before we've been able to reach 120. So really it only affects services which are coming along here which didn't stop at Didcot Station.
we've now reached the Morpeth board for the upcoming 120 speed limit, so I've just reset the alarm. Of course, I don't need to take any action at this point. Speed limit's just dropped to 120, and we're now passing through Chelsea Station. For any stations along here that have platforms on the main line between Didcot and Reading, the main line platforms are never used, I believe they're in fact closed, and trains only serve those stations on the relief lines to our left. Voyager which you've just seen passing on the relief line there should actually be passing us on the main. Unfortunately due to problems when setting up this scenario with the track directionality I couldn't actually get that service to run on the correct track which is why I've run it along the relief line instead of the main line. Now coming up on Goring and Streetly Station. We will shortly be coming up on a speedboard which again says 120 on it, but that's actually miswritten because it is at that point that the speed limit goes back up to 125 miles per hour. So I'm just looking out for that now. Here's the speedboard I mentioned, it says 120, it should say 125. And so I'm going to continue accelerating at this point. As you can see, we're only just getting to 120 miles per hour now. The next station we pass through is Pangbourne, and then between there and the following station, Tilehurst, we're going to get a warning for an upcoming 60 mile per hour speed restriction, which is one and a quarter miles from the speed limit itself. We're now coming up on Pangbourne Station, and so I'm just looking out now for the 60 warning. At that point I'm immediately going to idle the power, and I'm going to start applying the brakes.
We've just reached the 60 warning now, so I've just idled the power and I'm braking initially up to step three. In fact, I'm gonna go higher up to step four to try and ensure that we can brake and slow down in time. So I know it does take quite a bit of time to slow an HST down from uh, speeds as high as 125 miles per hour. I'm hoping I'm braking about right at this point. now down to 90 already so we've lost 35 miles per hour in speed we've now got a diverging route aspect flashing double yellow the uh, diverging route is just before Reading station where we're going to change tracks and the speed limit on the turnouts there is actually only 50 miles per hour so nothing that we need to worry about too much we're just about uh, we entered the 60 zone now probably 61 to 62 miles per hour. So I did slightly misjudge the braking distance. I should have gone up to step four braking straight away rather than step three to start off with. I don't think that the one or two miles an hour there is gonna make a huge difference. We're now climbing quite steeply on the new, newly built, um, should I say, Reading flyover at this point. And I'm just going to allow the train to coast, so we are going to lose some speed as we climb this gradient. And then as we get to the top there, we're going to level out. And then there's going to be a downhill bit just the other side of uh, this flyover. So the reason why I'm coasting at this point is just to allow us to lose enough speed. So I don't need to use the brakes too much on the downhill section on the other side. And then the 50 mile per hour speed restriction will be coming into force just a little way away from here, um, just after we've come off the flyover, I believe. You can see the downhill gradient now coming up. The HST that's just about to pass us has just come off of that. And so you can see it's just been climbing the hill in that direction. We're now on the downhill gradient, so I'm just going to use the brakes if necessary to control the speed. Hopefully I won't need to because of the way I've allowed the train to coast. And you can now see Reading Station coming up, so I'm going to start applying the brakes now anyway. I've just made a step 2 brake application to start bringing our speed down. Due to the downhill gradient, it won't bring our speed off very quickly. Indeed, I'm now going up to step three to try and bring our speed off a bit more quickly at this point. At Reading Station here, I'm aiming to stop at the end of the roof on the right-hand side. Just going to increase the braking slightly to step four because I don't feel we're slowing down quite quick enough. And now I'm just pulling back to step three, and now back to step two, to bring us to a much more gentle stop here at the station. In fact, I'm pulling back further all the way to fully release the brakes just momentarily, and now back up to step two. And we should now be stopping in about the right place. Departing Reading, the starting speed limit is 50 miles per hour, and we've got just under 36 miles to go to the next and final stop, which is London Paddington. I'm 
and currently in notch 3 of power and now going up to notch 4 and very shortly as we get towards 15 to 20 miles per hour up to notch 5 to accelerate up towards 50 miles per hour the speed limit will shortly be going up further to 60 and then finally 95 miles per hour before going up to the full line speed again of 125 miles per hour and then the line speed will be 125 for almost all of the journey into London. We're now passing the 60 mile per hour speed board, so the speed limit's now gone up to 60. The line's going off to the right hand side, which you can just see there with third rail on them, are the South West Trains lines towards London Waterloo. And also the uh, Gatswick Airport and Red Hill to Reading service travels along that route which is operated by well Great Western Railway as it is today using class I think class 166s though I could be wrong it could be 165s I usually miss the two up in fact it could be both the speed limit's now gone up further to 95 miles per hour and I'm just looking out now for the 125 speed board though the speed limit does go up to 125 before we've managed to reach 95 so it won't actually affect us at all and I won't actually need to do anything with the throttle now just stay in full power to accelerate towards 125 then go back to notch 2 as we reach it We're now passing the 125 mile per hour speed board. One thing that you will notice now along this section is just how many more trains we're going to pass. The section between Reading and London Paddington is by far the busiest section on the whole Great Western Main Line. And so you'll see now a, quite an increased frequency of trains passing on both the fast and the relief lines. We're now coming up on Twyford Station.
it's along this section where I tried to put a train in front of me that I'd, so I'd end up actually chasing some yellow signals on the way into London Paddington as there was a train scheduled on the first line stopping at Slough. But unfortunately, due to some bugs with the way that the scenario editor works, it wasn't possible to do this due to having signals stuck at red. And also the train slowing to a complete one mile per hour crawl on the approach to London which meant that I couldn't get past it and I was just ending up stuck and couldn't go anywhere so I unfortunately had to remove that train which is why we've got completely clear signals along this section I'm hoping that Just Trains release a service pack for this route which addresses some of the issues that I've been having with the signalling system when creating scenarios so that when I do a run such as say from London to Bristol that I'm actually able to have some sections where we're chasing another train and we have some more adverse signals which I think just makes things a little bit more interesting. Unfortunately, due to the large amount of built-up areas along this section, plus the increased number of trains, I am experiencing more lag issues than maybe on some other parts of the journey here. We're now passing through Maidenhead Station. I'm hoping that the lag does calm down just a little bit as it's getting uh, slightly annoying to be looking at. I really do wish that I could produce a smoother video Unfortunately, it's just not possible due to the nature of the graphics engine within Train Simulator itself. We're now coming up on Taplow Station. We're now passing Burnham Station. We're now approaching 125 miles per hour, so I'm just cutting the power back now to notch 2, which should maintain us at around this speed. Now coming up on Slough Station.
We're now passing Langley Station. We're now passing Iver Station. We're now passing West Drayton. Very shortly now we're going to start running under electrified overhead uh, wires. And that's because the line from Heathrow Airport will be joining us at Airport Junction between West Drayton and the next station at Hayes and Harlington. The overhead wires are starting just here and we're just about to cross under a flyover for the Heathrow Airport branch which is now joining us here. One key train we are missing for this section is actually the Heathrow Express train itself which is the class 332. What I've used as an alternative is I've managed to get a reskin for the class 360 into Heathrow Connect livery, which is correct as Heathrow Connect services do also run along here. And I'm using that as an alternative for the Heathrow Express. We're now passing Hayes and Harlington. We're now coming up on Southall Station and we've got the yard there now to the right hand side. There's often some old coaches parked up there, sometimes some old locos. I know that steam locos on rail tools are sometimes parked there. Um, and here we are at Southall Station. Coming up after Southall is Hanwell, then West Ealing and finally Ealing Broadway. And it's in the area around Ealing Broadway where we get our first speed reduction on the approaches to London Paddington. Initially with a reduction down to 100 miles per hour. Although the Morpeth board actually says the speed limit is dropping to 85, the actual speed board itself indicates that the speed limit is dropping to 100. And so that's the speed that I'm aiming to slow down to. We're now passing Hanwell Station.
In a moment, the Greenford branch will be joining us from the left, just before we pass through West Ealing Station, which is coming up in a moment. So I believe the Greenford branch has just joined, and this is West Ealing Station. Ealing Broadway station will now be coming up very shortly. I'm going to idle the power now at this point, knowing that I need to slow down shortly for the upcoming 100 mile per hour speed limit. I'm going to apply the brakes just as we enter the platform here at Ealing Broadway, up as high as step three. I'm not sure exactly where the 100 mile per hour speed board is, so I just wanted to slow down just about right. In fact, I've reduced the braking now to step two as we may be slowing slightly too early. And it looks like I misread the Morpeth board before as it says 100 over 85. So I actually assumed that it just said 85. I didn't notice the 100 part. So yes, we do indeed only need to slow to 100 miles per hour. Looks like I slowed down just slightly too early. Though we've just passed the 100 board now. Or 100 over 85 board, should I say. I've just increased the power to bring our speed back up to 100 for a moment. And now we're doing 100, I'm just going to stay in notch 1 of power. We're now passing Acton Mainline Station, which is the last station on this line that we pass before arriving at London Paddington. What I'm looking out for now is a warning for an upcoming 50 mile per hour speed restriction, which is one mile from the speed limit itself. We're now passing Old Oak Common Depot, which is the main depot for trains in London for the Great Western Railway. I haven't actually put any static trains in, just to try and help the frame rate here at this point. So I've just passed the 50 warning now. I'm going to now start applying the braking just as we see the bridge ahead, so I've now gone up to step 3 of braking. In fact, I'm now going to increase the braking further to ensure that we do slow down in time. So I'm now up as high as step 5 braking as I'm not quite convinced that we are going to slow down in time for the 50 limit otherwise. I've now started releasing the brakes 15 miles per hour above our target speed, because otherwise I know that we will slow down too much. So I started releasing the brakes as we were doing 65. As you can see, we're now just getting down to 50. In fact, I'm gonna to have to increase the braking just slightly and we're now down to 50 miles per hour just in time. At the 50 board there, we've got one mile to go to an upcoming 40 mile per hour speed limit. So I'm just going to allow the train to continue to coast at this point down towards 40. And then I will apply the brakes as we can see the 40 board coming up as we can now drive by sight at this point. For some reason when creating this scenario, it rooted me onto this track here where I'm not sure why it did we should actually be on the track to the right hand side but there were no actual points I could use to alter the routing so we get routed over to the left and now we've got this approach controlled signaling because we're going to be going back over to the track to the right shortly so I'm really not sure why it sends you over to the left and then back again but it seems that that's what train simulator wants to happen for some reason We've now got the warning for the upcoming 40 mile per hour speed limit. I've put the brakes into step one as I know the 40 board's still a little way off. I just think I can slow down nice and gently for that speed restriction. Looks like I can just see the 40 boards coming up now. I've now released the brakes completely and once again I'm just going to allow the train to coast at this point. We shouldn't need any power here on the approaches to Paddington Station. We do have a single yellow signal however, so I in fact have decided to start braking again to slow down, just in case we do have a red aspect coming up. 
now releasing the brakes at around 25 miles per hour which is a much more reasonable speed to be approaching the signals at in fact it may be that I need to stop and request permission to pass a signal on this section yet yeah, we'll find out in a moment now see the signal gantries just ahead and it looks like that we do indeed have a red signal I don't believe we should have one at this point so I will just stop and request permission to pass it in a moment Just come to a gentle stop just before the signal in step two of braking. Now press tab and the permission to pass the signal at danger has been denied. So we're obviously just waiting for a train coming out of Paddington. I didn't realize that this was going to happen in this scenario. So we'll just pan to a couple of outside uh, shots of the train. And then once the signal has cleared, we can proceed into the platform at Paddington Station. As you can see, the signal has now cleared and we've got a platform indicator above the signal, indicating that we will be going into platform 3 here at London Paddington. The speed limit is still 40 miles per hour, though I'm not going to accelerate to 40 at this point on the approaches to the station. In fact, the fastest I'm probably going to go is 25 to 30 miles per hour, which seems roughly the correct speed here. Just increasing the power a bit just to get our speed up. As you should have also seen there, it was actually the HST departing Paddington because we needed to cross back onto this track. That was what was actually holding us at the red signal. So once the 1900 service had departed, the signal was then cleared to uh, for us to go into the station. I've just idled the power now at 25 miles per hour. I'm going to start braking in a moment. I don't want to enter the platform at too high a speed. So I've now got the brakes in step two to bring our speed down nicely. I'm not actually sure what the speed limit coming into the platform is in real life. It appears to be set at 40 miles per hour here in on this route in Train Simulator. The reason why I'm not sure what the speed is is because when uh, departing in the other direction, the 40 mile per hour speed boards are actually just outside of Paddington Station. I've just got the brakes in step one at this point just smoothly slowing down towards the end of the platform. And I know with HSTs they generally don't seem to stop too close to the buffers so this is probably going to be about the right place to stop at this point. Just got the brakes in step two to come to a gentle stop. So here we are, arrival at London Paddington. Once again, I would like to apologise for the lag in this video. Unfortunately, it's just due to the size and length of the route and the number of assets which Train Simulator has to load, coupled with a rather old graphics engine.
But thanks for watching. I really do hope that you have enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please don't forget that you can find me on Facebook for the latest updates, the link of which is in the description of this video. And I'll also put a link to this route in the description of the video so that you'll know where you can purchase it from Just Trains if you would like to do so. Once again, thank you for watching.